Hi guys, how are you going? Campbell here from Autodidactic Channel. Hope you're all having a spectacular day. And today I wanted to have a look at Rome. This is a book I found from 1763 and it really shows uh, the size of some of these buildings that were around. And as we can see in this picture here, uh, we have quite a large building with a massive dome and this antiquitec that we see everywhere, the cross antenna, mercury ball, and then around the here we have the iron, you know, fencing kind of things that they have. Of course, the dome, and this is uh, that shape. It looks a bit like a capacitor. I'm not exactly sure what function that is yet, but look at the people here. As you can see, there's a person here, and look at the size of this building. A couple of people here. And as you can see, I mean, they look about half the size of this door and also uh, looks a bit muddy. Got a wall in the background here because uh, Rome was completely walled. It's a star city. And just one other thing is the size of this building compared to these buildings. I mean, you can see these are quite, you know, they're not small buildings. This is two story. So these are quite large buildings. Here we've got people. Uh, but look at the size of this one in comparison. So let's have a look. This is the edifices of modern Rome. a picture oh, I've got all the statues here Phoenician and now I think this is written in uh, Italian uh, Cardinal Carlo Rezon who Rezonico Viva International uh, the Vatican okay so it's the Vatican and again guys look at the size of these people compared to this building these are clearly the wrong size. This building was not built for people this small. And again, I mean, just look at how every surface in these old world buildings was covered. And this was in the 1760s. This was already built. Look at this roof, how they do the windows. It's just all done so perfectly, so symmetrically. You know, domes and uh, porticos everywhere. Look at up here at the side. But just the giant size of it. I mean, seriously, look at these people. Here's another shot of the Vatican. And again, I mean, these people are just tiny, aren't they? Look at the size of this person compared to this door. And again, just completely built out with huge three, four, five, six story buildings, towers in the 1700s. So this is the kind of tech they had. This is a horse and cart. And of course, look at the roads, they're all muddy. So how did they build this? How did they even bring in the materials to build it on these horse and buggies in this mud? You know, how did they get the foundation done? Who, Doug, who, who was the architect? I mean, and look at these statues. Look at the size of this statue. When you look at the building, that's a very, you know, compared to these people, it's a very, very big statue. How did they get it up there? You know, all this stuff, everything's completely symmetrical. Domes in the background, of course. And these are uh, people tiny tiny little people uh, a nice very large obelisk and are they hieroglyphs they look a bit like hieroglyphs don't they Egyptian hieroglyphs uh, again just in the mud just in the mud, tiny little people around. 
and these gigantic buildings. And, you know, we all know about fairy tales, fairy stories. I mean, look at these. Look at this, straight out of a fairy tale book. But were they really fairy tales? You know, we're taught to believe fairy tales uh, are just made up. But are they? And just look at all this mud everywhere. It's just mud city. So 1760s. So this wouldn't be too far after uh, the mud flood. So you know, probably a couple of hundred years, maybe. So a lot of it's still above ground, obviously. And I mean, the, this building is huge. Big tower here, Antiquitech. I'm not sure what that is, some kind of star. You know, just, and it's the same as we see all over the world today. It's just supersized. I mean, look at the size of that building. When you look at these people, <laughs> how many people could you fit in there? Oh, my gosh. And this is still uh, Vatican, I eh? Oh, St. Paul's, St. Paul's Cathedral. Again, I mean, that's just ridiculous, is it not? And look at the symmetry of all these columns and the arches. Everything just done so well. And you can see this is a wooden roof as well. Everything else is stone or, you know, brick masonry. Uh, so this, I don't know if this is a re-roofing, but definitely many, many of these buildings were re-roofed when they were found. But I mean, look at the height of look at the height of that ceiling compared to this person. That is just ridiculous. Buildings built for giants. And it, you know, it's just this scene, isn't it, of just mud, you know, just nothing around, no roads few boats and people and carts and just huge, huge buildings that really have no place there and no explanation. You know, in, in the uh, mainstream narrative that we're given, there's, there's no explanation. There's no room for explanation of buildings like this. I mean, look at this big... <laughs> we still see these everywhere too. These columns that just for some reason have a statue. It's just a column with a statue on the top. Uh, and always on these big, you know, footings, altars. Uh, they're everywhere. And here, this one's a fountain. Got little tiny people here. Again, just mud everywhere. Nothing's level. Cows wandering about. And uh, this. I mean, look at that. That is one large building. And again, look at the one, this is just across the road, this one, this looks like a smaller building. These, this looks like it's made for, this, you know, look, definitely look at the size of this guy. This is made for giants, but this one looks like it's made for smaller people. So what was going on here? Uh, were giants living next to us, next to different sized people? And look at this in the background, which has got the remains of a building that looks, well, it actually looks bigger. If you look at that doorway, it looks bigger than this doorway, doesn't it? And that's interesting that we've got a huge doorway here and then a smaller one here. Because look at the size of the people. And again, just, you know, antennas and statues everywhere, another tower. And is that that same kind of symbol? Yeah, old world Rome. And this one doesn't look quite as big. It could almost be a mud flutter. Uh -huh, it's in a mud flood. There's mud everywhere. I've got this people. Is that a dog? You know, towers, antiquitech, 
and just yeah, horse and cart to put just completely built out, but no roads, no roads. How did they get in there to build these things? You know, clearly these were here. Oh my god, a lot longer. Look at this broken off doorway. This is all been smashed out, and you can see this bit higher than down here as well. And uh, that's just huge. Look at these people. And this is, again, 1700s where we're told, you know, wasn't much tech, wasn't much industry, you know, uh, it was hard to get, you know, materials and things. So if you were going to build a building, why would you build it this tall? Look at all that wasted space. You know, you could build it this tall and it would still be a three or four story building. It's just so much materials and so much more time and effort. And for what? To just, what, have a bigger space? Oh, in their nice old world garb. Muddy streets. And just, you know, the best arch... I mean, this stuff is better than we can build now. Best architecture you'll find. And look at this dome. And, and they just do this so easily, don't they? They just go from... You know, triangles to half circles from squares and triangles to this looks like it's an octagon shaped building with a dome on top. They're just all these different shapes and geometry and they just fit them together so perfectly and just in mega, mega size. And there's hardly anyone there. Like the streets are pretty much empty. Again, ah, look at this, look at these three domes, all with their antiquity ten antennas. And up here, more antiquity. And just a huge, huge, huge oversized building. And yeah, little tiny people running around. Oh, is that the same street? Maybe. Look at all these people lining up <laughs> to get in this. I mean, that's just ridiculous. You know, who who built these buildings? Who used to live in them? How big were they? Is that a bell tower? Now, there used to be bells everywhere too. The bells, oranges and lemons, the bells of St. Clemens, they all seem to have disappeared. A lot of them are cracked. Like this bridge, look at this bridge. Look at that nice old world bridge and it's just cracked off there and it looks like the other half there it's just smashed in up here as well that's as far as i can get in it looks all smashed huge tower here and just yeah a bit of mud flow everywhere but check that out so this is clearly you know when this was drawn this is clearly an ancient bridge already I think that's that building we saw before maybe but I mean wow domes everywhere and again I mean there's too many buildings and they're too big for the amount of people you see and also you know for what we're told the populations were back then this guy's got his little umbrella see a lot of these uh, you know traditionally we're sort of told they're like, like an Asian kind of thing a parasol I guess French as well but they're actually in a lot of old world pictures what's that smoke and oh look, look we have a mud flutter back in the 1700s look at that buried so I mean these have got steps going up is that a retrofit? Small steps. They almost look human sized, don't they, compared to the rest of the building? Nice tunnel going into whatever this was. And this looks like it's a bit short, doesn't it? As do a lot of these buildings, and how much of these are underground how many levels are submerged
Ah. Okay, this looks like we've got an interval here. Here we go. Uh, where is this? This is St. Constance Hall's interior view, some kind of chapel or what they like to call chapels. Oh, my God, look at that. Huge dome. Miniature people. You know, old world antiquity area. See the size of these people. Columns, and that's some kind of massive dome. And again, you just see, you know, this internal architecture that they can do. You know, with arches this way, then it's up, and we've got an arch this way. You can see that's a different angled arch. All these different angles. It's not easy to do. And then, of course, they cover every inch completely symmetrically with these intricate patterns. I mean, you know. We don't even think of stuff like this today. Just giant, giant, giant buildings. You know, what happened here? Did, were these people just plonk here from, from somewhere else? Because they clearly do not fit in these buildings. And uh, looking very Russian. Back in Rome in the day. And that actually looks like the outside of that last shot that we saw. Like the outside of the building. Uh, was it that one? Yeah, see how this big dome? Might be that. Ah, oh, wow, mud flood devastation. Here's this huge obelisk again with the fountain covered in Egyptian hieroglyphs. Massive domes with antique tech antennas. Huge buildings and just mud, mud everywhere. People sitting in the mud, broken bits of buildings. Carts and horses, that's all they're getting around. And this guy's got his sheep. And I mean, look how wide the roads are too. But look at that, that's just completely mud flooded out. You can even see like, see the levels on this building, they're not right. And of course, look at that dome. There you go, that was uh, Italy, guys, in the 1700s. Italy or Italy? Rome. Rome, and here we go, communal bath, an old fountain. Everyone's jumping around. A few more people here, I mean, you know. And look at this is just completely built out. Look at that. I mean, is that not ridiculous? Clearly, clearly oversized for these people. Little, little tiny people here. Massive, giant buildings. Oh, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Oh, this is Q Place. Ooh. Nice big dome. <laughs> and here we have little people and mud flood devastation. The palace of the Chancellor Apostolique, uh, something to do with the Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church. Maybe he was a giant because this is a giant's building. And it's just a huge building. Even if it wasn't oversized and big, it would still be a very large building. Palace of Rotunda. Oh, gosh, Rotunda. Wow, look at that. And have these been bricked in, These, do you think? Because you know, how old are these? How many times have they been retrofitted? This is looking very worn. Very ancient. And I think this, I think, you know, these are all different. Oh, so maybe that is the last one we saw, but different to the first one. And completely built out. You know, people here having fights with dogs. Don't know what's going on. Don't look like they could have built any of this stuff. Look at that.
another pillar and just the same stuff just a giant buildings in a mud flooded landscape so the mud flood seems to have been I don't know, there seems to have been an event around the 1400s, mid-14 to late 1400s. Uh, and then, the, you know, as far as maps and things changing, that was kind of in, in the dates and everything. We're looking at sort of late 1600s. So there's a couple of hundred years in there. Uh, then, of course, we have things back up into the 1800s, the Carrington event, 1812 and... Then all world fairs started 1851 and it seems like the population's being re-released. But clearly in this shot, you know, this is post mud flood, but clearly uh, there's little people here. So, uh, you know, was there a reset between this book and 1851 or are they just multiple, you know, releases of population? Is it just a continuing uh, game of shipping us? around to different places so we don't know where we're, we're meant to be I and mean, who knows but what we can clearly see is that this world here is a post devastation world you can see mud and stuff everywhere you can see that they don't have the tech or the skills to build these buildings but at the same time look at the clothes they're wearing you know well who was making all these clothes So again, you know, these people look like they've just that they're in the wrong place, that they've been released somewhere, that they don't really belong, and they've got all these clothes. They all look the same. All their clothes are the same, are but very high quality. And just yeah, look at this giant big balls here, and we see these everywhere. Uh, they make them out of concrete now, but it's you know, what are they emulating? There's a nice big Antiquitec spire. The Vie de la Palace d'Espagne. Water. What is that? It looks like an elephant, but I don't think it is. We've got old carts here, you know, and look at that, how ornate that cart, oh, the horse and cart is. Another one here doing a big burnout. What? Dogs, dogs everywhere fighting. Why is there so many dogs in these photos? Oh, photos, <laughs> drawings, and, and talking about that, they're very good drawings, aren't they? Like, they're so you know, realistic. And look at this step. Look at that. Up to here, going up the top to the twin poles with the arch in between. That's ridiculous. And are these... I mean, they do look like human-sized steps, don't they? So who knows, maybe that is a retrofit. I mean, the Italians are known for their concrete. But just everything is just built out, but then no roads. Look at this. Look at this mud, and then it just flows down here, and then, whoa, straight down to another level down here. So how big is this building? I mean, if you look at that, one, two, there's another three or more stories at least below this. And again, these are people, just ridiculous, ridiculously oversized, and just... They're hanging out in the mud with the dogs. You know, all these buildings like this. How many resets? Oh, this one's lost its column. Looks like, what is that? Are they, a bit of remnants there, two twin poles. Or oh, is that the building? That's the building. Okay, so that's, yeah. Lost its obelisk or its column. Big octagon building here. And again, look at the levels. <laughs> Off down to the side, completely flooded out, mud flooded. I mean, you can see it everywhere.
again, that looks like the same place. Oh, that's that big slide. It's a big flat walkway. Ah, oh, now look at these steps. Now we do see this, you know, this kind of configuration quite a bit. And what is this? You know, these are called landings, we're told, and it's like, I don't know, a respite, but I don't know, how big were the people in these buildings? Were they were these steps for the bigger people? And these are steps for human-sized people, our-sized people. Because completely, look again, just flooded out everywhere. And, you know, of course. And this is, you know, these are people. So look at the size of these statues. You know, how... How did these people ever make something this big on a pedestal like this and get it up there? I mean, I would say they didn't. It's just it's just ridiculous. Too much of a waste of resources. Doesn't make sense. Nice big bell tower. And yeah, of course the old world was just covered in statues and obelisks and columns and domes and all this stuff done so well. But we don't seem to do that anymore. It's almost like we're being ruled by a different people or something. Just more of the same. Mud flood and giant buildings. This looks like it says government house. Oh, we've got some nice gardens here. They've replanted this one out, cleaned it up. And here we have a nice old world palace. Oh my gosh. I mean, these are just ridiculous. That stairs going up to this door here. Looks like we've, looks like we've got a door going down there. And again, just mud flood devastation. Of course, fountains, another staple of these old world cities. This one's got a fence around it. I wonder if that's one of the metal fences. And just, you know, ridiculous. Oh, there's another fountain there. I've got twin fountains. And everything's buried. Buried in mud and just people just walking around carelessly, not social distancing. Oh my gosh, more parasols down here. And look at this nice block work, huge block. Oh, okay, that's a fallen obelisk. See that, it's been smashed and it's got hieroglyphs all over it. Mud flood. No, no roads anywhere. Oh, look at that flood down there. So yeah, just completely a mud flooded out city, but you know, giant, giant buildings. I mean, what happened to these buildings? I, I'm, you know, I know some of them are still there and obviously the Vatican and that, but I don't think all of these huge, massive buildings are here. Look at these, you know, people. It's just the sizes are ridiculous. I mean, they're probably like this tall. And domes, I mean, and there's no one around as well. Not the fact that, you know, there's no road so that you can get in there easily. And look at the size of that building. All right, I'm just going to flick through these ones, guys, because it looks like we've got a few to go. But as you can see, it's pretty much all the same stuff. Uh, this guy's fighting with his horse, dog's barking, all two dogs are on his side. This guy's been thrown off, I think. And someone's running up here. But I mean, all these people too just, just look so out of place, don't they? In this post-mud flood world. This again, one of the you know, royal looking carriages. As you know, people on the back as we see everywhere. They're just tromping through the mud. I mean, even this, this is an old canal. You can see even this has been mud flooded. 
more ridiculousness stairs going up half windows in the ground massive statues and again mud flood devastation just everywhere chimneys what's that don't know what that is oh ghost statues okay just <laughs> don't know what to say anymore it's more of the same gigantic buildings mud flood i mean this is just ridiculous isn't it? Uh, i mean and of course uh you know oh my god rome was uh you know it was still in mud flood in the 1930s uh, when it was dug out this again look at this into the ground you know he's going to fit through that archway and then just these massively grand buildings obviously you know it's got underground levels and i mean that's interesting too just look at that i mean imagine if we got buildings that are flooded up to here that have, you know that are sort of built like this that are built to have underground levels that you know not not under mud but layered like this but then when the mud comes you fill up there and you just lose all of this because they're always finding roads under the ground and things and telling us so they that they're roman uh how's that for a big statue and is this just all what is this mud looks like it no one knows what's going on this is their little market Throwing together that, that's their marketplace. <laughs> but we're told the same people built this. Is that water? I think it is. Look at that. Water flowing through this building into a big pond. Wow, look at the size of that thing. So that's the other thing, I mean, what, you know, as I've said before, and many other people have, you know, all these buildings look like some kind of machines. Uh, and so with that last building, we've seen uh, a couple of people have touched on Niagara Falls lately. Um, so are these buildings also pumps of some kind, maybe? So there are plenty of pictures of big buildings with water going through them. And look at this, looking like Venice. Uh, this... Oh, yeah, just shadowing. So we've got our man-made canal down here. And just as I was talking about buildings with water flowing through them, see these? So is that some kind of pumping house? And there's another one there, or is it just to get, I don't know, is it to run off water? Is it to access water? Is it to access the current? And just yeah, ridiculous architecture. Oh, here's that building again. Just more people just running around with cows in the mud. Uh, but we're expected to believe they also built this on the weekends. Here's our twin pillars. Of course, with our ball on the top. I did not know that Rome looked like this. And again, I mean, look at this too. This is broken. This is all smashed. It's like a, the remnants of an old bridge. But look at what the people are living in. This old shack made of wood. And look at this. Got massive buildings. You know, bridges, arches. Everywhere. So who built all that? Because the people are living like this. They could build these, that, that's where they'd be living. Oh wow, these are all boats, look at that. Canal up to the main shore. I mean, look at that. That's just, imagine if our cities were still like this. It's just a completely different look, isn't it? It's just, just looks, I don't know, a lot better, definitely. Uh, is that a fire? I oh, know, trees. 
boats in the canal, lots of mud. And this looking like a huge factory. Well, what we think a factory looks like anyway. And there we go. We have come to the end of our book of giant Roman buildings. So I hope you enjoyed that one, guys. I will leave the link for this below. Uh, I'll leave the link for this below for the book uh, so you can go through and have a look at yourself. But this is a thing. Look at the size of these little people. Completely built out town with giant, giant buildings and clearly mud flooded. So these are the questions we, you know, we look at here on autodidactic and other channels as well with Tartaria and mud flood research. Uh, we do have a research page on MeWe, so please go across and join up. We're posting lots of information there. Uh, there's some really good researchers on there. We've got Berserker Bear is doing a lot of work with the admin and posting a lot of information. Uh, Michelle Gibson's been on and lots of other people, so go check that out. I'll leave the link below. Uh, and also, yeah, leave me a like, comment, subscribe, share this content if you like it, uh, help it get out there because obviously YouTube are using their algorithm against this kind of information for some reason. So it does make you ask, what are they hiding in his story? All right, guys, thanks for spending some time with me. Have a spectacular day, and I will talk to you all on the next upload. Bye for now.